Hello Steelers and welcome to this game of Through the Mud and the Blood. This is my now traditional seasonal game. Uh, well, three in a row is traditional I guess at this point, isn't it? Uh, but this is Through the Mud and the Blood by the Two Fat Lardies. Uh, this is a uh, why my favourite First World War set of rules by far and I've been playing quite a lot of it of late. I played it on the club, I played this scenario with my pals the other week and uh, I thought I'd record this one in particular for the Christmas special this year. This is the Battle of Bullecourt. It was fought on the 11th of uh, April 1917. And I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Uh, this was, uh, the, the, what, what's that got to do with Christmas? Well, the actual battle was fought in the middle of a snowfield uh, and also a snowstorm as well uh, when the Australians attacked, the 82nd Division of the Australians attacked Bullecourt village with several tanks in, involved. So, because it's my traditional Christmas game, I thought we've got to have some snow and this is the game. However, we're going to add to it a little bit by actually adding a little bit more snow. So, we're in the middle of the snowstorm, we're attacking the German Hindenburg line, as I say, this is the 11th of April. This was fought as part of the Battle of Arras, which was happening to the north, and this was a diversionary attack led by the Australians, but it also had the support of 11 or 12, depending on uh, which source you read, uh, British tanks, Mark II tanks these were. Uh, so these were under-armoured uh, training tanks that have been rushed to the front for this particular battle. Now this battle in particular holds quite a lot of meaning for me because I've excavated uh, this particular battle and the action that we're going to be fighting today led by the tank 796 which was also commanded by Lieutenant Skinner. Uh, we, back in 2017, we found remains of Skinner's tank in the field of Bullecourt, uh, quite close to the German front line and there was evidence that they had been fighting right up until the very last minute before their tanks were destroyed. This stands in stark contrast to Charles Bean, the uh, Australian uh, historian's uh, account of the battle, which was basically that he blamed everything on the tanks uh, because they were broken down, they were destroyed. Now, I mentioned that this was during a snowstorm. Uh, the tanks were painted in dark green from our discoveries because they still had the paint on them. Uh, so basically you had a basic big block of black moving through a white background. So any German gunner that couldn't hit that kind of target just wasn't worth their trade to be perfectly honest. But I wanted to refight this battle because as I say it means a lot to me anyway. But also it's just going to give you a bit of a, a different look at First World War Wargaming. Uh, by April 1917, the British Army had adapted the new SS-143 training pamphlet and the platoon had been split down into four separate groups. I'm not going to go too much into that because I have another video about the tra training tactics, uh, the changing tactics of the British Army in the First World War anyway on the channel, which I will put in the description down below for you to go and check out. But basically they're attacking the German lines. Uh, the Australians got quite close to them, but the 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 problem with this particular operation was that it was rushed the tanks were rushed into into battle uh, they were using ammunition that had only been con uh, made literally weeks before by our findings because we found some bits and pieces of it and also the british units the 62nd west riding unit uh, division uh, to the to the north of bullecourt basically didn't get the order to advance uh, and they went a day early so there was no support for the Australians when they attacked this area. There's a second battle of Bullock Corps later on which is a bit more successful but this one was pretty much a, f a miserable failure on the part of the Australians. What's interesting about this particular battle and it kind of inspired me when I saw Graham Atkinson's uh, game over at Steel Lard was that it is open over open territory uh, over terrain basically open terrain uh, and if you go to Bullock Corps today you'll see what I mean it's rolling fields uh, with a couple of dips in the ground but pretty much the attack went over open areas areas obviously that the ground was churned up quite heavily from shell fire as well so it was a pretty poor situation to be in fighting across these areas but what we're going to do is we're going to see if the Australians can do any better than uh, they did on the day and even if 796 itself the tank can get can do any better as well so it is supporting it's a male tank as I said commander by Lieutenant Skinner uh, I've given him a different name because of the just because of the the names of the cards that I've got in play here but we'll look at those in a second, we'll look at the rest of the, the forces, what they're made up of, and I can talk about that, and uh, we'll go from there. As I say, in the game that we played, myself and Mark and Dean, we, uh, the, the Australians 
managed to get up to the wire but they couldn't actually get into the German uh, trenches themselves. So I've kind of tweaked it a little bit but I am going to uh, uh, keep the, the, the whole thing pretty much as it was as we played it the other day and hopefully it'll be an interesting uh, and entertaining game. So let's have a look at the forces and see where we go from there. Okay so these are our forces in total that we got here. So we basically got two British platoons which are Exactly, pretty much exactly the same. Each of these are made up of uh, rifle grenadiers, a section of rifle grenadiers, uh, a section of rifles, a section of bombers, and also an LMG section as well. And they're the same. So there's four four sections in each one. Each one of these are led by a corporal, and each of the uh, the platoons are led by a lieutenant and a sergeant as well, with a couple of runners. We've also got as well our head honcho, uh, which one is it? Let me just put, remember which one he is. Uh, so that's Charles Kimpton, he's in charge of the tank. Uh, but we have our other chap here, Major uh, Jasper Whitecat Chapel, who is uh, in overall command, so he's a status four, so he's a big, big, big man. Uh, we've got the uh, 796, uh, unfortunately I don't have any Mark II tanks, so it's, uh, we've got Mark IV tanks standing in for it this time. So we've got basically two platoons of uh, fire and manoeuvre, with all those different elements in them uh, made up as I say as an SS-143 uh, basically a platoon facing them in the trenches we have the Germans over here and each of these are made up of <coughs> these uh, sections themselves and each of these sections have uh, two of them have got eight men in them with rifles uh, so there and there and then we've also got these ones with eight rifles and then two LMGs they also have as well two machine guns two uh, medium machine guns there uh, Lieutenant, I think he's a Lieutenant, is he? No, he's a uh, Unter, Unter officer. Lothar Voller is the man in charge, and then we also and, uh, and we also have as well a 77 millimeter uh, field gun or anti-tank gun, which has been dragged into the front lines to defend against the tank attacks. So quite a mix of things, and I wanted this to be a bit of a bigger through the mud and the blood game. Normally I played only a platoon. This time I wanted to get quite a few on the table. So we've got quite a large deck of cards here for it. These are the named characters. Uh, let me just quickly go through a couple of these for you. These ones have not yet to go into the uh, it, obviously into the deck just yet but you can see there we've got the Germans and the British. We've got several command initiatives here as well. Uh, what we've got in the card deck uh, for example, we've also got the Look of the Devil and uh, Das Glück der Teufels. These are specific cards for any big man if they are hit and killed. If this has been held in the card, uh, the hand of whoever whoever's uh, big man it is, if it's a Look of the Devil British, if it's Das Glück der Teufel, it is uh, Germans. They can play that and they can ignore it basically. Uh, he's bounced off his uh, off a, a Bible or something. We also have uh, Charles Clinton, I mentioned, the uh, guy in charge with the tank. And we have this as well, Tank Core Breakdown. Now, what I did, what I thought of, this is going to go into the deck when the tank is revealed. It's currently on a blind. If this comes out before... This card is drawn before Clinton's card is, then the tank has broken down. It can still fire, but it can't move. So I just thought that's an easy way of uh, just dealing with the, uh, the, 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 the tanks. Once the turn is over, it can move again, unless, of course, the tank card, that card comes out before it as well. So that's a slightly different way of doing things. This is the starting deck. Just to show you through, we've got British blinds, German blinds, we've got the open atom, which is a bonus move for the British, and time for a snifter. You'll also notice as well we have German SOS artillery and German communications down. Now, <clears throat> the German SOS artillery is uh, an artillery barrage that they are able to fire if they draw this card first. They can fire it, start firing in that turn. It lasts for four turns and will drop, sorry, three turns and will drop four shells on one of three previously designated uh, points on the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put three uh, basically shell craters out and I'm going to roll for which one it is that, the, uh, that it falls on if the Germans play this card. We had it before and Dean chose three shell craters in the centre of things. So I'm going to keep it with that but this time I'm going to randomise it by uh, having the 
having a role to see which actual shell crater it is. However, the Germans also have German communications down as well because it was a snowstorm and there's a British artillery barrage going off even though it was rushed. Their comms may be down, so if they draw the comms down card before the SOS artillery, they don't get to use it this turn, so it's just going to uh, stop them. Uh, they can use it, e they can either leave it in the deck or they can use it immediately when this card comes up. They can't use it if the comms down comes up beforehand. So that's the basic deck, that's what we're going to be starting with. Obviously, this bigger deck will be added to it as the blinds are revealed, everyone's starting on blinds. Uh, or as they deploy themselves. So I'll uh, get this stuff out of the way and I'll just show you the table, see what it looks like as well. So this is the table that we're fighting over and as I say, best representation that I could make of Bullet Corps itself. Uh, I probably could have put a few more fi uh, folds in the field but at this point where the German lines were it was they had quite open areas, uh, pretty much killing zones for the attack because they'd sighted the Hindenburg line pretty well. And this at the back you can see is the German Hindenburg line. I have put all their blinds in the front line trenches so they are either machine guns, uh, units, uh, in infantry units or uh, the 77 mil gun itself. I did think about putting some of these in reserve but I decided not to. Uh, these are all on the table. They will have taken a bombardment before the battle begins so we're going to test to see if they're still in their shelters when they do reveal themselves and to see if they get uh, attacked, uh, damaged by the bunker, uh, by the bombardments before the game even begins anyway. So when the blind is revealed we'll roll for damage on them and if they stay down in the bunker or not. Over here we have the Australians attacking, so you can see this is one platoon over here and then we also have, uh, I'm not going to show you all these because these are the blinds, I want to reveal this as it goes on and here is the other platoon over here. So we've got the, basically the idea uh, in the previous game, the Australians managed to move all the way across here very quickly and they got up uh, towards the wire at least. Uh, these ones over here struggled a little so I want to kind of see if there's a, a balance also as well what we didn't do before is because of the barrage I left all the wire intact. What I'm going to do in this game is I'm going to go through each piece of this wire Roll a d6 and a 5 or 6 has been destroyed by the bombardment so there is at least a way of the Australians getting in. So we're going to go through that in a second. One other thing I just wanted to talk to you about and tell you about is, you may have noticed it, we are using force morale in this game. Uh, I've recently, previously written a very short article about force morale. I've sent it in for sub submission to the uh, Two Fat Lardies uh, annual for this year. Hopefully it'll get in there. I don't know if that's been released by the time this video comes out because I'm recording it sometime before. But basically there is no force morale in Through the Mud and the Blood. I've uh, tweaked both the sharp practice and the, and the uh, chain of command bad things happen table and turned it into a force morale system for through the mud and the blood. We tried it out in this game and it worked really really well. So I'm just going to stick with it. Uh, basically you use exactly the same as chain of command to set up your force morale in the first place. If you've got more veteran units then you get a plus two on your dice. More veteran units than uh, average units you'll get a plus two on your dice. If you've got more uh, poor units than average units you'll get a minus two on your dice. In this case, everybody is average, so we're just going to go for it. So I'm going to, I'll show you the uh, force morale first of all. So for the Germans, they've got a three, so a three is uh, that is a force morale of nine. So let's just stick the Germans on there. I've also got a bad things happen table, as I say. Well, that will come into play as things happen, so you'll see that. Next up, the British or the Australians, should I say, have got a five, so their force morale is going to be a level ten, uh, which again is quite different to what we had in our game previously. Uh, so uh, we had, I think, the British had a lower. I think it was almost exactly the opposite. The, the, no, the Germans had eleven. The British, I think, had nine. So it was it was quite a tough one for the the Australians, sorry, uh, rather than the British. Right. What we'll do now then is we shall now roll for all of this wire. And I shall go through each one of them. <coughs> I shall do this now on table, and then we'll just see what wire is intact and what isn't. So, starting with this first one, we're going to go with fives and sixes. It's taken off. First one is off. Uh, hopefully, they're going to be able to have a big gap here. Four. No, that's that's still in. Next one. A one. Third one. Five. That's gone. 
this one here, that's a six, I just rolled. Sorry, I didn't roll it off camera, but in. <laughs> uh, trying not to cheat here for you. So the next one, a four, no, that's in. The next one here, a four. The next one here, three. The next one here, a one. The next one, a one. This one here, a uh, three that time. Over here, we've got a four this time. Uh, a four for this one as well. Ooh, it's pretty intact over here. The next one over here, a three. So we've just got to lean across the table here. Uh, whereas our next one is this one here. That has gone. Uh, we've got another one here. A two, that's remaining. This one, a one remaining. Next one, a one. And then three more. First one is there. Second one is there, and then the very last one is still there. So, uh, a couple of gaps in the wire up here, which is pretty good uh, because that's the closest point. They want to get into those trenches, and not so many gaps down here, unfortunately, for the attackers on the right flank. Right, so what I'll do is I'll get that uh, get set up, and we'll start with uh, drawing those cards. All right, so the game has started. Right, uh, I'm not going to do every single card draw. I'll just show you some of these as we go. I mean, there's I've done some of the Through the Mud and the Blood games where you can see the cards, but I just want to show you, you know, the, the opening moves, basically. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what's happened rather than uh, keep drawing the cards in front of you. I think that's probably a better way to do things. Also, speed stuff up, otherwise you'd just be watching me draw cards. But anyway, speaking of which, let's draw cards. Okay, first up, German communications down. So, as I said, they now can't fire their SOS artillery barrage uh, until uh, unless until uh, the the snifter card is drawn but they can only do it back again uh, so next up right British blinds uh, right so this is the Australian so this is their chance to move so they are all going to move uh, and they can actually move in formation as well because they're in a relative formation so what I'll do is I'll get those moved uh, or you know tell you what I'm going to do with them and I'll show you where they've all ended up so in our opening moves, the Australians on the right flank, which is a bit of a feint to be perfectly honest, have pushed forward only 7 inches. Uh, I think they may be within 24 inches of those German lines, so they can be actually spotted as well. So let's just see if they can, I'll measure that in a second. However, here, over here on the left hand side, we actually have uh, moved forward a lot further. These got 12 inches forward. Because they are blinds, they can move on 3d6. So they did. Instead of spotting, they just piled forward. Uh, this is the easiest way to do it. So they've all pushed forward. Now, just checking, we have a 24 inch range. Because these are in the open, they are spotted automatically on 24 inch. And it looks like pretty much everybody here is in 24 inches. So I'm going to reveal each of these. So, first of all, we've got Corporal Stepney and his bombers from Platoon C, uh, Corporal Hoxton and his, his rifles, down here we've got a Platoon HQ, uh, we've also got Corporal Bow uh, and his rifle grenadiers here, there's Tank 796 coming in support and then also here we have Colonel Romford, Corporal Romford and his LMG uh, section and then finally we've got Major Whitechapel and the Company HQ over there. So that's those ones, let me just come over here because I think some of these ones over here might also equally be in uh, spotting range of the Germans. So let's just have a look, we've got, yeah, those front two are definitely in, I don't think anybody else is, so I'm going to reveal these. This is Corporal Plasto with his rifles, and this is Corporal Cable with his bombers. So what I'll do is I'll put their decks, uh, their cards into the uh, into the, uh, the, the the deck and also get them on the table, and you'll see that in a second. So you can see here we've got a huge amount of British cards to go in now. So we've got uh, pretty much all of the corporals apart from two of them. We've got uh, the second lieutenant Millwall and Beckton, as well as the uh, uh, the platoon on the left. Uh, got a couple of the the guys over on the right hand side as well. Uh, the as I say, a couple of the uh, the corporals. Also, we've got first lieutenant Charles Kimpton and his tank core breakdown because that has now come out. We've got Major Jasper Whitechapel, and because he's gone in, I've also put in the Look of the Devil card as well. On top of that, I've put in a few of the British uh, command initiatives as well. There's a few more to go in, but I thought because uh, there's only one status four, 
well, there's a couple of each of these ones, so I'm going to put those in when the rest of Platoon uh, D, I think it is, over there, then when they get revealed. So these will all go in at the time of a snifter card. So let's continue drawing our cards anyway. Let's see, next one is the German SOS artillery, and we've already got German comms down, so they can't fire it this turn. As I said, next up, now it's time for a snifter. So we're going to put all these into that deck. I'll give that deck a shuffle and then we will crack on with the next turn as well. One other thing I wanted to mention is that we've kind of changed the rules a bit. At the end of a snifter, anything that hasn't activated may activate, and we found that was a little bit overwhelming because you've got a lot of fire coming from units that haven't done anything. So we decided in our recent game is that if you have any of these command status initiative cards left over, you can spend them for one action on a unit that hasn't activated. So you'd need two to get a full activation. Uh, and we thought that was quite a nice way of using leftover cards but not allowing everything to activate in the turn. Uh, which just adds to the friction really, uh, which I, I kind of like. Uh, so we just added that in. I can't remember if I did it into the, uh, into the, the article that I wrote or not with a force morale, but I should have done, but never mind, uh, uh, I'm sure I can squeeze it in somewhere else, I might put it in and resend that article, but anyway, enough about me wittering on, let's crack on with this turn, next one up is German SOS artillery, so they could fire this now if they wanted to, and did you know what, I think they're going to, because the British are right on those shell uh, craters that I've already designated as targets, so we'll go through that and uh, see what happens with it. Okay, so I said at the start there were three shell craters that I chose which were going to be the points of potential aim and this is one, this is one and this is the third one, these are the ones I chose. So I'm going to roll the dice, one, two it's this one, three, four this one, five or a six this one. The British are hoping for a three or a four, the Germans are hoping for either really. Uh, so let's just roll that dice, see what we get first of all. It's a three, one, two, th uh, so we said three, four is this one, so I'm just going to make, point that in there. So I remember. Now, uh, artillery works like this. Uh, let me just uh, close up a little bit on the uh, on the camera, and I can show you exactly how it works. So artillery or uh, SOS artillery, at least, falls with four shots. This doesn't count. Each shot is you, we use the deviation dice and two d6, and that's where it lands. And it also then has a burst of four inches. So let's just give that a go. So the first one is going this way, 12 inches, up towards those German trenches. That's not great for them. Uh, but there's nobody in that burst, so that's landed pretty uselessly. And it does this four times for three turns. So the next turn is, uh, it disappears on the end of the Schnifter card. So this one is over here. I think this is going to be relatively uh, safe for the British, but let's just see anyway. Uh, that one is on target, so that's actually in the shell crater itself. And then the third, fourth and final one is again on target. So both of them are landed there, the last two. So relatively ineffective for the, uh, the Germans uh, and good for the British, or the Australians at least. So the German artillery has fired, so I've removed that card because they can't use it again. It's just going to keep firing on that spot for the next three turns. However, uh, we then go on to the next card, which is... Status for British Command Initiative. There's only one man that can use that, and that's their uh, their their captain. Is he captain or is he? Uh, I can't remember what he is. Major, sorry, uh, Whitechapel, because he's only of the only one of the subsequent uh, of that particular uh, level. Next up, okay, it's uh, Wilfred Hoxton. So this is a status one. These are the rifles on the left flank. Uh, they're in a great position because they're actually in just in front of open wire. So they're actually going to try to charge into the German trenches and cause some damage. Okay, so you can see here we've got Hoxton and his rifles. And as I said, there's a gap in the wire, in the, in the wire here. So they're going to try to charge in. Now, this is not really covered in the rules because uh, blinds, they, uh, they operate on their own cards. So what I'm going to do is, He's going to charge in if he gets within close combat uh, range. He is currently whoa, well there, 11 inches away. So if they manage to get further than 7 inches, which will bring them within 4 inches of the blind, they'll be in close combat with them. So then what I'm going to do is, then I will reveal the blind. If they stop short and they're within 6 inches of them at the end of the turn, if they haven't revealed already, they will then reveal anyway. Uh, so basically it's down to this. He either takes them by surprise 
Also, because they've been under that bombardment, we're going to test for any effect of artillery on whatever this unit is that's under here. So let's have a check, see how far he gets first of all. So we're looking really for a 7-up to, to get into that trench, or <laughs> 2, there you go. That has <laughs> pretty much answered all of those questions. So they managed to get forward 2 inches. He's used uh, his command initiatives just to get up there. So that's as far as they have got. Uh, so that's them done. I'm just going to uh, mark them. Right, next up. Uh, Albert Plesto, and this is Rifles of Company B. So they're on the right hand side, so uh, he is just going to advance with them. So I'll get them moved forward. So very simply, he used one action to get, or they, he activated his men, they used one action to move forward, they moved six inches, and then they've also gone, they've used the get down. So they can't fire, but they're basically, it's basically tactical uh, in chain of command. It means that they are now in light cover rather than in the open. Next up, hey, it's British Status 1 command initiative, so we'll keep that to one side. Then... Uh, Harold Stepney, that's the rifles on the left hand section. Uh, so, sorry, not rifles, that's the bombers. So, let's see, uh, they are in a good position to try to again to get into that German flank and try to roll up the German trench. So, let's see if they can do it, even if the rifles didn't. So, we've got Harold Stepney over here. It is Harold Stepney, yes. Uh, and his bombers, and what they are going to do is they're going to try to get in this gap of the wire and up to the Germans here. They're currently in these uh, shell craters. They're just over six inches away from the Germans, so they wouldn't be revealed immediately. So what are we going to do? We're going to do the same again as before. They're going to try to get into that attack. They are currently about eight inches away, so they only need to get four or more to get into close combat. So, fingers crossed they won't get a double one like uh, the other lad did, but uh, let's see if they actually manage to get in. And then also what I'm going to do as well is, if they do get into the attack, they are going to use spend the command initiative level one uh, to add further to any attack that they go in. So let's have a look. That's 12, that's double six, so they are actually in. So they have made it up to there for sure. So, what happens now is, we are now going to reveal what this German... Uh, blind is first of all and let's just see this is uh, German uh, the good gear fighter Adler and is Hel is Helen G team so all I'll do is I'll get them set up because they have now been uh, jumped on so I'll get them set up in the trench and uh, they will just immediately go into close combat all right first of all there's a couple of things that I need to work out now we've just revealed Adler and his men we need to see how much damage that bombardment did before they were revealed so we roll a d6 first of all uh, it's just a straight roll because there's no mustard gas or tear gas and that's a five that has caused two dead and two shock however because they're on blinds, we ignore the shock. They've shaken that up before they come up, but that is too dead. Let's actually just see if it's Adler himself, a D10, uh, one or two it is. Uh, no, it isn't, so it's just two of his rifles are dead. Then we also have to see if they are actually going to remain in the bunker or they're going to come out uh, as they are revealed. Are they in the bunker already or are they at the, their position? So we roll a D6. A six is yes, they have remained at their post in the trenches. So uh, they are now in the open, well, in the in the trench itself, not actually in the underground because that would have been worse for them in the close combat. So now we're going to work out our close combat dice. So let's work our way through it. So first of all, the British have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine men in total. So we're starting with nine. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm um, just adding all these up for you in front of you. The Germans have now got two, four, six, eight, nine as well. I think the British might come off worse in this. They normally do if it's uh, if it's the same same levels. So let's just have a look. Eight, nine. They probably really should have fired rifle grenades at these before they came in, but they couldn't because they were on blinds. Uh, I'm just trying to get them into the trench as quick as possible. Well, let's just see. Uh, so anyway, we're adding further for the British with our status one uh, initiative card. Uh, so we'll get rid of that. That goes back into the deck. So that adds another one on. Then for each uh, each big men, we had one point one d six for each two status levels of all big men. They're both level one, so they don't get any additions for that. However, the British moved. Uh, they moved two d six, so they get. Uh, the Germans then get another four on top of that, 
uh, because of that movement. They're firing them as they're coming in, basically. Uh, I'm going to call these bombers aggressive troops, because they would be. Uh, the bombers and the, the riflemen are aggressive, the rest of the platoons aren't. So these are aggressive, so they get an extra half a dice each. So that is, that's going to be another four dice for the British. They're also bombers, so they also get another half dice each as well. Uh, so that's another four dice for them at least. The Germans are defending medium cover, so we add one for each additional dice per two so far. Add one each uh, dice, so let's just have a look. Sorry, that's uh, basically half again of what they've got. So two, four, six more dice for the Germans. As I say, this is going to be very close, I think. There'll be a lot of dice in this, but he's going to be very close. Uh, six, sorry, there we go, six. Uh, under playing the Germans, then they are not hitting the rear. There's no lancers, no cavalry, or anything like that. So we just roll these up fives and sixes. Five, uh, fives and sixes are kills, and sixes are shocks. So the British bombers, first of all, let's have a go. See what we get. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, that's nearly wide with the Germans. Oh. Uh, eight with only one shock. Uh, so let me put that shock on first of all. Again, just while I remember. So that goes on there. Let's see what the Germans get on their roll. Uh, so that's actually a lot better than I wasn't expecting. That's pretty much wiped them out, uh, which is what they wanted to get into that trench. So let's see what the Germans do. And I can't see as many in there. We've got uh, one, two, three, four. That's five kills on the British uh, with two shock so let me just get that shock on as well so just while I remember then we'll roll to see if their big men are hit so let's get that shock on first of all so for the Germans uh, it's going to be under a, an eight do we say one two three four five six seven eight yeah so under an eight on d10 uh, yes Adler is one of them so that's going to be seven rifles so let's just take those off two Four, five, six, seven. So that basically leaves the LMG team. I'm leaving them on because somebody else would pick it up naturally. Uh, so that leaves the LMG team and Adler. We've got to see what happens to him if he has been killed or not. We'll do that in a sec. Now the British, under a five, or five or under, yes. Their big man is also hit. So three uh, of theirs, sorry, four of their fellas are hit plus their big man as well. So now we've got to see what happens to each of those big men. So Adler is, uh, roll the dice, a two, he is lightly wounded. Uh, so these are gonna be bad things happen, I think. Uh, this is also gonna force the Germans out of here as well. So he's lightly wounded. Uh, the British, he has been, uh, he's lightly wounded as well. One to four is a light wound. So that's, both of those have now got bad things happening to them, uh, but the British have actually won the uh, they've won the the attack and they've won it by uh, kind of let me what was it? It was uh, eight to four, eight kills to four, wasn't it? So uh, so that's basically they've won it by four. And let me just find it one second. Talk amongst yourselves while I find this out. I should have had it open, waiting for me, but I didn't. Uh, the Germans are defeated by four or more, so they're actually thrown back 18 inches, which I think is just enough to take them off that trench. So that's them off. So that's going to be some bad things happen, right, for the British. And I'm going to allow the British then to remaneuver and get into the trench itself. So they're actually in there now. They've captured it with their man. They're taking their shock with them. And four bombers remain. So that was worthwhile doing because they've at least cleared out that flank of the Germans. However, we now have bad things happen for both sides. So first of all, we've got the Germans. They were forced to withdraw. Well, actually, they were wiped out. Uh, no, they were forced to withdraw. Then they were wiped out. So I'm going to roll for two of those. Uh, some people say you probably shouldn't, but I think they should because this is such a devastating attack. So forced to withdraw, first of all. Five, that's one point off the Germans' force morale. So let's drop them down to nine already. Then a group wiped out, because they have been wiped out. They've been forced off the table and killed. Uh, so that's six, that's two of their <laughs> force morale. So they're straight down to seven. This is not good, looking good for them. Uh, and also they have a status one leader routed from the table as well. So we roll again for that. 
Uh, four is he, uh, that's another point off. So I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore his wound, but I'm just going to take that uh, rousing off the table and running away. The Australians, they have a status one leader wounded. So we roll for that. Sorry, status one big man. He's wounded. Uh, so a three becomes, that is one point off the British. So they've suffered as well for that as well. So they've dropped down to eight. Uh, sorry, I think I'm getting these two wrong, wrong way around. Um, the British were on 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, the Germans have lost 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the, Brit the Germans are now down onto 5 already, whereas the British are down on 9. So, uh, a successful attack all in all, I would have said. Okay, back to the cards. Okay, so we've got German communications down. I've taken out their SOS fire card, so I'm just going to take that out as well, because they can't do it anymore anyway. And then, oh, it's time for a snifter. Right, so that German artillery will fall again because it always falls on a snifter card. Uh, so we'll just do that, see where that falls. And then the only ones that have got an initiative card are the British. So there's only them that can actually do anything. Uh, and this, as I said before, this only provides them with half an action. Well, one action uh, for one unit. So I'll just have a think about who wants to do what. And uh, we'll go from there. Right, let's see where that German artillery falls. So first one is going seven inches over here. And this is the second of its three turns of fire. So the second one only comes down to here. So this is probably going to be pretty ineffective to the British because they're so far away from it anyway. Uh, eight inches over there. And then finally, the last one is five inches this way. So that was the closest. They really needed to be at least 12 inches to hit those uh, the LMG section over there, but they just haven't done it. So for that British initiative card, they're just going to spend it actually on the tank to try to get it forward. So what we do is it's only one action, so it rolls 2d6 and it removes the lowest of the uh, other scores. So that's a four inch, just moves forward four inch to there and stops there. Uh, so at least it's getting forward. Right, we're starting up the new turn. Uh, first up, Ch uh, first lieutenant Charles Kimpton. So that is the tank. Uh, he has. They have two actions when they activate. So he's going to activate that tank to move forward. He's got no targets because the Germans are still on blinds, but he can start pulling up some of that uh, barbed wire at least. So like I say, he's using these two actions. So we take roll two dice, take away the lowest, and that's the move. That's literally it. That's all they're doing. First one, second action. Take the lowest there, so there we go. That's them further, further forward slightly. Next card German blinds. Okay, this is the Germans' chance to deploy now, so they're going to because it would be stupid not to. So when they deploy, they can fire. So that's literally what they're doing. They're going to be deploying and then firing with uh, full effect. So coming across the German trenches, let's just have a look. So we've got a uh, rifle group deployed here. Uh, they lost a couple of men in the barrage. I've tested for them already before they came on. Then we had a machine gun was here. Uh, this was actually destroyed in the barrage. So there's only three men left. They lost two men as well. So it's, they've gone down to two rifles. Uh, the Unter officer is kicking about in the middle here uh, in the best position to uh, give orders wherever. Then we've got another group of rifles over here. They are lost, uh, I think it was about three men or something. Let's have a look. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight out of... Uh, no, they only lost one man, so they did okay. Then over here, we've got another machine gun. This, unfortunately, was damaged. They lost two men and it was damaged. So that needs a six uh, to operate. Uh, and then it'll be undamaged. Then we got the field gun. They just lost one crew. So they're okay at least. And then finally, over on the very end, the barrage wasn't as heavy over here, and the uh, LNG team didn't lose any men. So, that's the German state at the moment. Uh, they are looking over those trench lines that you can see. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to allow the Germans now to fire uh, with their uh, on their blind card. I've put all their cards back into the deck, so they will come up uh, at the end of the turn, perhaps. So, I'm going to work my way down the uh, Germans firing. So the first ones are going to be these guys here. There's two, four, six, seven of them. These are firing on blinds, so they're not firing, you know, it's not uh, firing as uh, as they've been acted by their uh, big man. They're just firing themselves. They are firing at the British in front of them and the rifles because uh, the trench, they can't see around this corner at the moment. 
to the bombers. So we're hitting here, because they're at close range, less than 18 inches, we are then hitting on a three up. So let's have a look, see how many hits we've got. We've got one, two. This might be where the Germans get a bit of hit back. That was a hit as well. So that's six hits. They're in the open. Two up is shock. Five or a six is a kill. So let's see what happens to them. So that's oh, that's three kills and three shocks. So let me quickly put that shock right on those first of all. Then we've got those three kills. Are any of those on their big man? On their corporal? <coughs> so uh, one, two, or three it is on the D10. Six? No, it isn't. So it's just three of the rifles. So that's quite a, a hit in the first place. And I guess while I'm here, I may as well also fire with the remains of the the uh, machine gun crew as well. There's only three men with three rifles. So they're hitting again, firing at those rifles again. Three is up. Uh, they have hit three, so we roll those. Uh, so that's, that's another kill and two more shocks. So that has really knocked them about uh, before they've even got into action. But let's have a look at that kill as it's on their big man. No, it isn't. So they've lost over half of them they have two four five men left five shocks so they haven't been pushed back yet so it's not a bad thing to happen for the australians at least and then meanwhile over here we've got this section of uh, a group of uh, rifles firing we've got the mmg which is still broken so they're going to need to roll a six before they can get it to work they've got the field gun which is also going to be firing they're all laying their fire into these poor guys of the rifles here who are tactical and then they've got the lmg team over here so we're going to start with the rifles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in there. Two, four, as I said, this might be where the Germans get a bit of revenge on the Australians at this point. But let's just see, uh, they are hitting on, uh, I think they're, yeah, they're close range, 18 inches. Let me double check that. I didn't check before I started rolling. No, they're actually over. So uh, they're hitting on fours up this time. So that is, <clears throat> that's still quite a good number of hits there. Two, four, six hits on these rifles. Uh, they are tactical, so six is a kill, four five is shock for these uh, because they are currently in light cover. So that's three kills and one shock. Put that shock on there and let's see if it's on their uh, junior or on their uh, their big man. Uh, that is one, two or three. He's been hit. No, he hasn't. So three kills on the rifles. That's quite a lot of kills actually uh, for what they really want. And... Then we've got the MMG, they're going to try to get that to work, six and it will, let's have a look, five, no that was the first action, second action, same again, one, no they haven't got it to work. We do have this field gun, that is firing, that's firing with two, two actions, uh, 66 per action, it reduces cover so they will be in the open if it hits, uh, and this is a, I think this is an effective range for a, uh, a field gun. Uh, let me just check, double check on that one. Field gun, uh, close range is up to 24 inches, so yeah, they're definitely in. So these are hitting on, uh, for close range, they are hitting on threes up, so we'll get rid of all those miss misses. So that's quite, uh, that was a miss, I just knocked it over. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits, all in the open. So five, six of the kills, uh, and twos up are shock. Ooh, that's four more kills and three more shock so that puts them up to four these are taking a battering these poor guys uh, so then four shock and four kills is it on their big man one to a four yes he is hit so let's just get rid of three rifles first of all just and then what has happened to him six he is killed a five no he is uh, heavily wounded so he's actually knocked out wounded and knocked out uh, so he's going to have to be carried off the field by his his men. However, they are also pushed back because they have uh, they are now more shock than men. So they are going to be pushed back two inches. So that is a bad things happen. Two bad things happen because not only have they taken a hit on their uh, big man, so they're no longer tactical, and uh, they have been forced back as well. So I'll roll for those. First, uh, we'll do those first because we roll them as soon as they happen. So the first one is force uh, group force to withdraw. <clears throat> so one, no effect. Uh, status one leader wounded. Uh, that is a three. Uh, that's a point off the Australians. Uh, so he was obviously a very well liked man. 
and then they're going to fire again the uh, Germans with their LMG team over here which is the one very on the very end uh, I don't know if you can see them just make those out these are the ones that were unarmed so they've got an LMG with six dice first of all I'm going to roll those separately I'll tell you why in a second five six seven eight nine rifles as well two four five six seven so we'll do the rifles first again let's just check that range see where they're at they are just over 18 I'm going to say so they're hitting on fours up so we'll do the rifles first four up not a great many hits there this time one two three four hits just put those to one side uh, they're all misses <clears throat> then we've got the LMG it's firing with 66 uh, sorry it's, yeah it's a Lewis gun so actually it's firing with uh, 8d6 four per action and if it rolls more ones and sixes, then it has jammed. Let's just see. Uh, hitting on fours up again, so that's more like it. That's what they want. So that's uh, nine hits in total. I think this is not going to exist anymore. Uh, they're in the open now, so fives and sixes are kills. So that's one, two, three, four kills. There are f uh, more men than than uh, than uh, fellas. So uh, sorry, there's there's. Uh, there's more kills than fellas, so I'm going to take all of them off. They are killed. So that is unit wiped out and a big man killed as well. So let's just roll for the damage on that. On the bad things happen. We've already got a minus one from previously, so this time it's gr group wiped out. Uh, five, so that's minus two points, so that's three so far. I'll make a note of that. And then uh, a status one leader has been killed. Let's have a look. A four is another two points off. So that is four points off the Australians. Then that knocks them down pretty badly from uh, right down to five. Gosh, <laughs> this could be a pretty close, a quick game. Right then, coming back into it. So let's see after that hammering. All right, uh, status four, British Command Initiative. So that goes to one side with their status three that they have. Next up, British Blinds. So we've got still got three British Blinds on the table that haven't yet done anything, but the Germans have now, they've now shown themselves. So perhaps it's time for them to deploy and fire as well. So these are the remaining British Blinds. Let's have a quick look. So we've got Corporal Shoreditch with his LMG platoon or section. Uh, let me just find those. Uh, they're all difficult to see. Jack Shoreditch, there he is. And his mob. So we put him where the blind should be and then we'll get this LMG section into action. Although their attack has almost broken down because they, their, uh, their rifles are uh, have just been wiped out. So his card is going to go into the deck. Uh, who have we got here? This is Platoon B's HQ, so this is our sergeant and our lieutenant. Uh, you can put these with sections if you want to, but I've kept them separate just simply because I wanted them away from the fighting. Uh, I wanted them to be, sorry, not away from the fighting, but in a in a position to be able to go and deal with the fighting. And then we've also got the Rifle Grenadiers with uh, Corporal Bromley. So I'm going to put all their cards into the deck. All the German cards have already gone in anyway. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, they have gone in. So now everything here can fire. So we're going to have some firing from the British once I've got this set up. So. So we're going to start with the Lewis team, sorry, the Rifle Grenadiers over here. They're firing at the Germans in the LMG team on the very end because they're probably the worst uh, culprits over there and they could probably deal with that field gun if they can get around the edge of it. So we're going to start with that. These are uh, firing basically half a dice for each action, so that's going to be eight dice in total however they have to half that because it's their first firing so they're just getting their ranging in but they are of effective range so they're hitting on fours up it's only four dice but at least they're going to hit on four or above and it also reduces cover from medium down to light so it's reasonably good so let's have a go uh, so we've actually hit all four of those so then that reduces their cover down from medium as i said down to light so in light cover a 4-5 is shock, 6 is a kill. So let's see what they get. They've got one uh, shock, one kill. Is that kill on their big man? On a 1, it is. It is, it's hit him. Uh, so let's just see what has happened to him. 6, he's been killed. So that's a bad thing's happened straight away for the Germans. 
let me put that shock on just while I remember and then we can roll that uh, quickly roll that um, that uh, bad things happen so that was poor old Fritz Bergman let's see what happens it is a leader one killed uh, five on the bad things happen for a leader one killed is uh, another point off the Germans so they're down to four so they are going to actually remove one of their uh, one of their initiative cards I'll take that out at the end of the turn uh, but that was good shooting from four rifle grenades and then we've also got the LMG team and these guys down here we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine men two of which are in the LMG team so that's going to be six rifles so we'll start with those these are now in medium cover though so we'll just start firing with those <clears throat> so they are actually hitting on fours up that's only two hits so they might get away with this and so that's two hits first of all then we've got that LMG and that is firing eight shots uh, same again ones more ones and sixes is a jam uh, two ones two sixes so we're okay but they're hitting on um, fours up two four five hits plus those other two hits as well these are now in medium cover because uh, they are in the trench so six is a kill five is shock uh, so we've got only two shock on them so it's not caused a great deal but they have killed their big that big man so that's not too bad at least so I put in all the chaps now so everybody's in there well, the gang's all here so let's have a look uh, so it's Major Jasper Whitechapel and he's a status 4 uh, we've actually also got status 4 British Command Initiative and status 3 so he can add those to his status and turn him onto a status 6 if he wants but let's just see what he does with that okay so Major Whitechapel has got up to here he is uh, basically moved forward he's got himself into a good position and he's now uh, he's used one command initiative to get into this tr uh, shell crater he's going to get another one another one to use to fire with the LMG team over here they're going to be firing at this uh, group here and also with the bombers as well they're going to be firing at this group as well uh, and then we'll see we might get these to fire as well but these are in pretty bad way I was trying to get him up to them to drop their uh, shock but he just didn't make it he didn't get there in, in, uh, in, in time so so we're going to start with these rifle grenadiers same as before it's a ranging shot so they need fours up effective range so four up uh, one four dice uh, but they do reduce shock so that's one uh, so reduce uh, cover so that's one hit so they are putting them in light cover so let's just see five is a shock on light cover so it's a start if nothing else so we'll put that in there then we've got that LMG team and the rifles and this is uh, there are one two three four five six seven rifles and then that LMG as well firing at the same target so these are also hitting uh, let me just check I think they're probably over 18 just over 18 yeah they could fire at those three rifles up there but we're ignoring them we're going for this bigger group that's the the the, the bigger threat so these are hitting on fours up so that's one, two, three, four, five hits. So I'll just put those there together. Then that LMG, uh, again, eight fire, uh, eight shots. And we've got that. Uh, one more ones and sixes is a jam. Uh, we've got one one, but no sixes. So that has actually jammed, but this has also hit another four. So I'm just going to put a, a little marker on that just to remind me that that has, that has jammed. So let's just put that under there so we know. I should also be marking these units so I know that they're activated as well uh, for the end of the turn really shouldn't I there we go that's them then so but in total we've got two four six eight nine hits so that's pretty good going they are in medium cover though six is a kill and I think it's uh, four five is shock let me just double check that 100% uh, for medium cover uh, Yes, five is, is shock, six is a kill. So we're looking for fives and sixes. We've got uh, one kill, one, two, three shock. So building the shock up slowly, so that takes them up to four. And that kill is it on there, big man. Let's have a look. Nine, no, it isn't. Nine. Nine, <laughs> it isn't. It's another, just one of the Germans, uh, one of the rifles. So reasonable uh, bit of firing there and that's just come from the uh, from the, the 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 major himself 
I almost forgot we've got this, these guys as well. These are firing. These are at close range. There's only only three shots because of the shock and the number of them in there. Uh, they're hitting on uh, threes up. So that is one hit. And let's just see. Six is a kill, five is shock. Nothing, no effect. Then next card. Uh, second Lieutenant Henry Millwall. Okay, so this is our man on the left as well. So he's going to get something going, I think. Okay, Henry Millwall has pushed forward from his shell crater. He's got out of here. He's come up to these guys. He's dropped their shock by two by using his command statuses. So that's his move and a command. Then he's using his third or this third British command initiative to then uh, get the bombers in the trench to throw their bombs over into the Germans over there. So there are, uh, let's see, we've got two, three, four bombers, uh, three bombers, should I say? No, is there? There's, yeah, there's four bombers in there, so that's going to be eight dice, uh, but minus one because of the shock, so we're taking that off. And they are hitting, they are effective range, hitting on fours up. Let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four hits. And these are now in light cover because it goes from medium down to light, so six is the kills, and uh, five is shock, I think. Uh, four, five is shock. Let's have a look, so that's two more shock on those. That's taken them up to six. Any more shock, and they are going to start falling back. Okay, next card then. Let's see, we are status one British command initiative, right, so that comes out. We'll keep that. Next up, up and atom. This is a free manoeuvre for move card, should I say, bonus move for any British unit. I'm going to give the up and atom card to the British bombers over here. I want to get them up and into the trench, or close to the trench if I can. Uh, so that's nine inch for them, so let's just see. So that's going to bring them up here, so that's a, a pretty good bonus move on their part. Let's just get them in position. Uh, I don't know if they're actually in range of those Germans yet. Uh, about 15, 14 inches away, so I think they are actually in bombing range if their card comes up. So, the next one <coughs> uh, Albert Plasto. Plasto was killed in the last round, so I'm going to take his card out, so he's done. Unfortunately for him. Uh, Gefeiter Franz Adler, he has also been killed as well. He Well, he ran away, if you remember. So he's out as well, so I'll get rid of that card. Then next up, uh, Frank Cable. Oh, that's the, the bombers again. Okay, so he's got a choice. Does he Do they charge or do they throw their bombs? Do you know, I think they might throw their bombs, do a bit of damage to those Germans over there. So we've got this bombing attack. We've got six bombers, so that's going to be 12 dice, and then also three rifles as well. And the bombs are reducing cover. They're all firing its effective. So let's have a look. So we need fours up and everything. Uh, the rifles have all missed, but bombs have done a little bit better. One, two, three, which is better because they're reducing cover. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hits in total from those bombs. They reduce cover from uh, medium to light, so we're shocking on four fives, killing on sixes. Let's have a look at what we've got. We've got two kills and three shock as well. They've already got three shocks, so that's going to take them up to six on those kills. Let's see if those two kills are on their... Uh, their big man. So one or a two and he's hit. Eight, no he isn't, so it's two of the rifles. So they're starting to peck away at them as well now. Okay, following on. Uh, we've got Corporal Wilfred Hoxton. Hoxton is the rifles man over on Platoon C, but he has finished. He's done all the stuff he can do anyway. They activated earlier on. Uh, look at the devil. Right, that can now come out and that can actually be held by the British uh, and they can hold that. It doesn't have to go back into the deck at the end of the turn. Tank core breakdown. That's obviously come out after the tank, so the tank is still fine. Uh, Romford, Harry Romford is, uh, just check, he's the LMG guy, they have already fired, they've already activated this turn so they can't do anything, he does, he has no shock to reduce, just reminded me actually, um, yes, uh, what was his name, uh, Hoxton, he can actually reduce shock, uh, because he, that's not an activation, so I'm just going to bring that down from three down to two, just reminded myself, uh, Romford, they don't have any shock on theirs, so, We'll carry on. Status 2 British Initiative, put that in. And German Status 1 Initiative, we'll take that out as well for them. Then we've got Sergeant Jack Beckton. Uh, okay, he hasn't done anything, so I think I'm going to get him to activate. Okay, Beckton has moved forward 
with the two scouts using a command initiative so that was one and he's got up to the bombers here and he's actually going to reduce their shock by one with his extra uh, order there and then he's also got these two status two and a status one command card if he wants to use them and he will do so he'll reduce shock by a further one that's only using up one of those cards so we'll hang on to a status one uh, the status two card and get rid of that so he's got shock off those bombers and actually uh, basically uh, resupplied their unit he's brought it back up with those two scouts then who's next uh charlie bow he's fired he was the rifle grenadiers uh, on the left flank so next up time for a snifter we almost got through uh, what was the last german what was the last one it's not in german uh stepney uh the everybody has a couple of cards left over so the british have got two cards which we said we can spend those uh on actions but everybody's done something i think so there's nothing they can do and the same with the germans because they all activated when they came out of their blinds so i'll shuffle the cards and we'll start again but that was the snifter so before we do anything else we're going to do the uh german artillery fire this is the last of its rounds anyway so this is the third round it fired so let's just i just forgot first one is on target so that's one down the next one is four inches this way so that lands here like i said i don't really know why i'm doing this unless there's a a 12 inch one or a 10 inch of uh, whatever to come over this way uh, that may affect the British but let's just see uh, so the third one <laughs> there we go speak of the devil that one lands six inches this way so that lands there is it just in they are just out so I'll just clip them uh, and then the final one the last German round 12 inches and unfortunately for uh, the Germans that has fallen just too far away from those British so that's the last of the German fire, or the last of the German SOS fire. Uh, very ineffective this game, unfortunately for them. Right, next turn then. Uh, Bert Bromley. Bromley is the rifle grenadier over on Platoon, Platoon B. So he's going to launch some rifles at those Germans. Uh, this is the second time they've fired at that target, so they don't need to reduce their dice this time. So Bromley is at the back over here, getting his men to fire at the Germans in the trench over there. Uh, eight shots hitting on fours up because uh, they're effective range. So look like that is four hits reducing their cover so they are now in light cover. So six is kill, four five is shock. Let's see what we got. Uh, that is three shock so that takes them to nine which I think might actually push them back. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six men in there so yes they are going to get pushed back i'm going to push them down the trench though uh, rather than falling back because there's, uh, rather than running out of the trench out of the trench they would run away from the trench so i'll just get those moved up and uh, get them that is actually a bad thing's happened so let's roll for that that's group force to withdraw uh, let me just make make a reminder for myself that they've lost three more shot and so for group force to withdraw is a one is no effect then we have uh, Jack Shoreditch. This is the LMG guy for Platoon B. So he's going to open up the only, I suppose the only real legitimate target is the field gun that he's facing them because uh, the Germans have just run away from the parapet are down in the bottom of the trench so they can't fire at those anymore. So this is Shoreditch and his boys. They are firing across uh, seven rifles and that uh, LMG. LMG is in blue if there's more ones and sixes. It jams. Uh, there are three ones, so I think that has jammed, but it has done some hitting as well though, so let's look. We've got one, two, three, four hits, and rifles, one, two, three hits. So seven hits in total, but that LMG is jammed. Let me just put a jammed marker under that boy so I can remember. And then seven hits on that, uh, on that field gun, that is in medium cover, so six of the kills, five is shock. So we've got one kill and one shock as well on that gun next up uh corporal harry romford this is the lmg guys over on the other uh platoon his is jammed currently so is it worthwhile then moving forward uh and maybe ignoring the jam and just going getting up a little bit closer 
No, he's going to unjam and then they're going to fire at the remains of that German machine gun crew. If they could have done, they would have fired over here, but there's too much happening in between, I think, uh, with the tank and with the other crews over there. So they're going to fire rifles at this German machine gun team over here. Uh, these are the rifles, first of all, hitting. So we've got, ooh, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six hits out of those rifles. Then we've got the LMG. Now, we need to unjam it. So the way we do this is we've got eight, eight shots in total. For, we fire, we roll one dice each time, and then whatever dice are left, if we get five or six, we unjam. Whatever dice are left over, he fires with. So that's one, no, two, no, three. There we go, we've unjammed it on the third one, so that leaves him five shots. These are hitting on fours up as well. So that's two more hits there, with the seven we've already got. This is on three men. There's no big men in there, they're just... These are just normal soldiers, but they're killing on six, uh, shocking on five. Let's have a look. We've got, oh, that's two kills and one shock. <laughs> so that has, uh, they haven't run away uh, and he hasn't destroyed them, but that has um, certainly uh, stopped them laughing in church, hasn't it? Let's just put that in there. Okay, let's go again, see what we got. Uh, British Status 1 Command Initiative, so that comes out. Up and Atom, uh, free move for the British. Oh, there's a lot of choice here. They could charge in with those bombers and finish off that German section, which may very well win them the game if they get enough points on the force morale. I think they're going to, you know, because they are pretty shocked at this point and they're pretty damaged. So we're going to do that, I think. OK, so I've worked the numbers out. We've got a mix of British scouts and bombers that are going in, but they are going in against Germans with six shock on them. So, And I'm calling these Germans in light cover rather than medium because they are in the bottom of the trench with them. The British have got the bombs. They're also, some of them are aggressive. So they've got loads of dice. Let's have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 against the Germans, 8. So I think the, the British... Our odds on to win this, <laughs> they only need to cause six kills, so we're looking at fives and sixes. Uh, so look, we've got one, two, three, four, five kills. No shock though, but that has killed five of them, so that's pretty much wiped them out. Let's see, if, we will see if it's hit on their, uh, their big man. And then the Germans on their strike back, they have done one, two, four kills, uh, that was a six and three of those causing shock. So let me put that shock on the British. First of all, the Germans took none. Uh, so that's the three shock. Then we've got four kills as well on the British. Right, well, uh, let's do the five kills on the Germans first of all. Is it on their big man, one of them? One to a five, and it is. Yes, it is. Uh, what has happened to him? That's the next question. Uh, we roll again. He has been killed, so that's a dead uh, big man. And then also four of them. They will then run away <laughs> anyway. Well, 18 inches. They're going to fall back 18 inches plus an extra 10 inches for them. So they have gone. They've disappeared off. So that has destroyed them. The British, let's see if those any of those four hits were on any of their big men. So we'll look. Three. Yes, it is. Right. One to three. It's their, uh, their corporal. Four to six. It's the sergeant. Uh, it is on the sergeant. What's happened to him? Uh, five. He is badly wounded so let's put a red tab on him so he's been very badly hurt poor old Sarge Beckton there and that's going to be a bad thing's happen for the British right so first of all let's just get rid of some of these casualties and then we can start working out what's happened so the Germans he's fallen back 18 inches and then also taken another 10 inches off so he is gone that has disappeared disappeared they have also lost a level one big man as well this is for their uh, now for their bad things happen, so we'll work our way out. So this is a group uh, wiped out first of all. Uh, so one is one point off, so that drops them down to three. So they're going to lose another initiative card. They've also had a status leader killed, status leader one killed, well status leader big man killed. Uh, that's a two. That is another point off, so they're now down to two. They are really hovering. However, the British. They've lost a few as well. Let me just take some of these out. They, they lost four, didn't they? Uh, they lost three, actually. I'll take a scout and a bomber and a rifle. A bit of a mix. Uh, so they are okay shock-wise, but they've had a status... He is... Uh, Sarge Beckton is... I think he's a status two, isn't he? He's a uh, status two leader uh, wounded, so we'll roll for that. 
Uh, that's a five. They have lost one point, so the British are down to four as well. God, both are teetering on the brink at this point, but uh, it could still go anyway. But the British at least have cleared this right flank of the German trenches. Well, this game is definitely hanging in the banish, so I just remembered. I'll take that card out because it comes out anyway because the British are down to less than four now and they're, uh, they're down to four and they have force morale. Anyway, so we've got a German status two command card. Uh, I'm going to leave this in for now because uh, this is it only comes out at the end of the turn, so they'll take that. Then we've got a British status four command initiative, so we'll put that to one side. German status one. Again, these will stay in the deck until the Snifter card, like I say, and they'll come out. Uh, status 2, British Command Initiative. There's a lot of these statuses coming up. Uh, the look of the Teufel, so we'll keep that aside for the Germans. Uh, German Field Artillery. Okay, so that is going to open up on, possibly on the Bombers, I think, or even the LMG team. So we've got that German gun at the front there, firing away. It's going to fire away at the LMG team down here, because... They are a potential threat, I think, at the moment. So they're hitting on uh, fours up. Uh, one, two, because they're at effective range. Only two hits out of all that. Not great. Uh, so that's, but they're reducing cover, but they're in the open anyway. So five, six is a kill. Uh, two up is shock. So two shock, uh, but no kills. God, they got away with that pretty uh, pretty safely. It's obviously because the, <laughs> the uh, artillery has got shock and is uh, not a very happy bunny, I think. Then our next card is uh, Gearfighter Johann Kleist. Okay, so he's about the only operational German at the moment. Uh, so they are, they've got the rifles, they're going to fire across. Again, they're going to fire, I think, at that LMG team. Or is it better to fire at the other LMG? I think they're going to fire at the other LMG team. Uh, they didn't come under fire this time just to uh, try and get their heads down. So yeah, I think these ones here are the more immediate threat. So they're firing at them. Effective range, fours up. Uh, it's only a few rifles, so we've got uh, four hits. They are in the open, so five sixes of the kills and two up is shock. So we've got two kills, two shock. Is that kill on their big man? One or two it is. No, it isn't, so it's just two of their rifles and then also two shock. Uh, so they're taking a bit of a hit, but not enough to cause any bad things happen rolls or anything at this point. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, it's one of it's finally uh, Lothar Voller has got off his arse and done something. Right, he is probably going to run down that German trench, I think, and then try and sort out some uh, shock on some of those units down there, I think. So Voller has only made it as far as the German machine gun. Uh, he didn't get any closer to his men. He would have been able to reduce quite a lot of shock if he had, but at least he's closer to them now. Then we have First Lieutenant Charles Barking. Uh, I believe he's with the rifles. No, he's on the other side of the table, so I think he might get the uh, those bombers moving forward, to be honest. So Barking has run up to the bombers and basically ordered them to move forward, so they just charged. They got six inches forward. They just ran up there uh, just to get closer to that trench if they can. Right, let's have another look. Time for a snifter. So that ends the turn. We've got two cards for the British left over. So that's one full action, uh, one full activation. Then we've also got two cards for the Germans left over as well. There's not a great deal the Germans can do. Uh, everybody has done something, I think. Part of the media machine gun. Let's try that. Uh, let's see. That needs a six. Let me just draw the camera out. And if he gets a six, it can do something. So it's going to active, try to activate the gun. First one is. Let me roll it on camera. Four. Their second action. No, so it is still broken, unfortunately for them. So the British are then going to use their rifles to either fire or attack that last last bit of the German section, I think, over here. Well, I did initially think of using the rifle grenades against the final German uh, crewman of that gun, the machine gun down on this flank, but I decided not to. I'm going to use it against the uh, Germans here instead. So four shots, they are hitting on fours up because they're just in, just in effect. Uh, this is a new target, so that's three hits. They're reducing cover, so that causes uh, so that takes them down to a six of the kill, four five is shock. Let's have a look. Nothing. One two two. So we then go on to the next turn. Right, first card of the new turn is uh, Bert Bromley with his rifle grenadiers. So they are going to lay down some more fire on that 
uh, anti-tank gun, or on the 877 mil gun, so let's see what happens with that, shall we? Okay, so Bert Bromley's rifle grenadiers are firing once again at the, uh, the, the gun, the field gun. These are hitting on fours up because they're effective range. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, six hits. Well, that is above average. Uh, they are killing on sixes and shocking on four, five. There's only three men left in there, actually. Let's have a look. Uh, so they've got uh, two more shock on them, so that takes them up to three. So they are teetering, they've not destroyed the gun, but they are teetering on the brink. <laughs> like everybody is at this point. Uh, but good shooting, Bert. Then we have uh, German Status 3 Command Initiative. Then Major Jasper Whitechapel. Okay, so he's over on the left flank. So I think he's going to get quite a few things to get doing stuff. So the Major is over here in this shell crater. First of all, he is going to get the LMG team to fire up here at that section, uh, the German section. And then he's also, well, he's also getting the rifle grenades to do the same thing. So they're going to pour fire into them now. Then he's going to get these to move forward into the trench. And then he's going to also try to get forward himself. So let's see what happens. Unfortunately, he can't command the tank because they wouldn't be able to hear him. But rifle grenades. Effective range, hitting on fours up. So look, we've got one, two, three, four, five hits. Uh, reducing cover, so that goes from medium to light. So four, five is shock, six is kill. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, three shock, but no kills on those. Then he's directing the LMG team to do the same thing. These have got one, two, three, four, five rifles. So that's blue for five rifles, then red for the LMG. The LMG is un, uh, unjammed this time, so that's good for them. So these are also hitting on fours up. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four hits, five hits with the LMG, but it is, it's gone jammed again, so let's just jam that up. <laughs> Not very accurate or anything, is it? Uh, so these are now killing on six, uh, shocking on five. So we've got another three shock on those. That's certainly building it up, if nothing else. So that takes them up to six now from their three. Not enough to start pushing them back, but it is quite a lot, and they've got to deal with that as well. Then, as I said, he himself will move. He's going to be moving up nine inches, hopefully to get to that other shell crater there. Yeah, him and his scale can get up there. So they're in there. And then they're also getting these to move forward as well. If they can, they might get into contact with the German there in the trench. Let's just see, eight inches. Yeah, you know, they've done it. They've got through, they're into, they're in up here. So this is now going to be a close assault. So, uh, mind you, minus two, two inches, but they're still within four inches of him, so they can still do their close assault. So, uh, let me just reset the cameras and we can work out what's going to go on here. So as I say, we've got these lads piling in against this German here, but it is pretty equal to be honest. Three, six, seven British dice against seven German dice. So let's do the British first. They only need to kill one man, but they could end up with quite a lot dead themselves. One, two, three killed. So that is him dead, wiped out, 100%. There's no point in calculating the shock, he's gone. How many British... Do you know what I've been forgetting to do is the uh, losing a, uh, a, a close combat as well for bad things happen but they have lost four of their men uh including no sorry three of their men with one shock so that's taken them up to three shock three of those men let's see there are two uh big men in there so let's see if either of those are affected uh no they're not so it's just three of the rifles one two three that's almost destroyed that section but they are just hanging on the german team has now been destroyed so we'll just take those off now. So that is a bad thing's happened for the Germans. Uh, as I say, they, I, I forgot about it before. It's a lot losing close combat. Uh, they've lost a close combat, so that's first bad things happen. That's a one, no effect. However, they have now had a support unit destroyed because that was their machine gun. So see, five is two points off and that will reduce the Germans right down to zero. Meaning the game is over and the Australians have just pipped it and just won with that final assault from uh, Major Whitechapel. Okay, so there we have it. Game over. The Australians have won 
uh, by reducing the German force morale but they were also into the trench anyway up here so they managed to get in with them with the rifles and the bombers as you can see and they'd absolutely cleared out this bottom, top end of the, the trench. I think that was probably helped a little bit by the holes in the wire and also the fact that that German machine gun up here was had been destroyed in the bombardment. I think if that had still been around it may have been a different story but uh, who knows? Uh, and also, if the Germans have been able to get onto those blinds quicker than they did as well, I think that may have may have changed things a little bit. Let's have a look down this back end here. The Germans. This uh, grouper was relatively unscathed. They were starting to take shock. They were up to six, uh, but lost very relatively few men. The machine gun, which never got started because it was broken, uh, but Voller was running down the trench to come down here to try and sort out what was happening down here. This mess, where you got the field gun uh, taken, more casualties, and also this group as well over here. Uh, and unfortunately for them, you've got a big uh, lump of British bombers just about to jump into the trench as well. They probably would have made it either. Well, they would have to get through the wire. And my thought was, with the wire, it takes a turn to get through it. Uh, they kept their support units back. You can see them both here, the LMG and the uh, rifles. Uh, same with over here as well. The rifle grenades and the LMG stayed back uh, to provide firing cover as everything else came in the tank. It was about as useless as 796. <laughs> well, no, that's that's not too, that's not fair because at least it got further forward than it did in our previous game where it was destroyed by German artillery. Uh, the German gun never brought to bear on it. The machine guns do actually have uh, an anti-tank capacity, so they they could have possibly trained their guns on it if they'd have ever actually got them uh, firing. But the British. Oh, the Australians won that, I think, generally through through the fire and manoeuvre and just using their big men as you're supposed to, I guess. Uh, heavy casualties, though. Two wounded big men up here. Uh, none there, surprisingly. Uh, but we've also got... Uh, this is the end casualties. I'll just show you this as well. So this is uh, all the dead so far. So the uh, Australians lost full section of rifles, uh, pretty much another full section of rifles and bombers. You can see who was in the fighting uh, at the forefront of it. The Germans lost pretty much two sections as well, uh, completely half of their sections and also that gun as well there. So very heavy fighting, very heavy casualties and I think the force morale certainly worked. Uh, British got all the way down to four, the Germans were on zero on that last point. Well. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, would I, that went very differently to the uh, proper battle and also to the previous game that we played as well where the Australians managed to get to the wire but not into the trenches. So I suppose it shows you, you know, different tactics and different timings and different card pulls really make a difference. A little bit of luck, a little bit of skill, uh, or <laughs> I don't know if it's skill on my part, but certainly a little bit of luck anyway. Uh, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Great game. Uh, I really like Through the Mud and the Blood. Uh, I've said it before millions of times. It's I think it's probably the best First World War game out there. And I, hopefully this video has shown you that the First World War can be wargamed. It can be done quite easily. And it isn't just about men walking into machine gun fire. So, if you have enjoyed it, leave me a comment. Uh, I may write this up as a scenario. I don't know where I'd publish it. Possibly on... Patreon or something, uh, or even send it over to Two Fat Lardies for their annual, but we'll just think about that, because it'll need a bit of work, I think. But anyway, if you've enjoyed that, uh, let me know in the comments. If you haven't enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. And uh, I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes uh, in the rules, so, you know, write in and let me know, <laughs> as, as people always do. Uh, but check out Through the Mud and the Blood. Uh, you will like it. I'm fairly sure of it. I certainly do. And... Uh, if you haven't already, check out uh, my Patreon, check out my channel membership, you can help out the channel that way. And thank you very much, as always, for watching another Storm of Steel Battle Report.